Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about this storm out over here in Texas going into Louisiana. Eventually, this is going to move into the Alabama area as well. We're going to be watching this storm throughout the day and monitoring what the mesoscale environment is around this storm and also going to be breaking down exactly what storm parameters will be dictating how our storm will act in the current environment that we see around it right now. With this storm, we are are expecting some severe weather today also with the potential for some tornadoes a couple of tornadoes being possible mainly down here into this region and I really don't think the tornado potential is going to make it up here but we could see some severe weather but our main threat is going to be further down to the south kind of in this corridor right here you can see we have an injecting surface trough somewhere up here into sorry upper level trough up here into Kansas and that is going to eject across the United States and eventually kind of get shipped made off to the east as a new trough comes down into Canada, bringing some snow chances further up to the north. And that snow is going to track across the Great Lakes. And eventually we're going to see this wind pattern on the back side of our low pressure start to work its way over the Great Lakes. And we're going to start to anticipate some lake effect snow out there for a lot of folks along the Great Lakes. And some of that might go a little bit further more into the interior here of the northeast. The first thing that we're going to talk about with our storm is the shear. But in order to understand what these colors even mean and how they're even important at all, we're going to be looking at this. This is a model here of our environment. These blue arrows up here are the 500 millibar winds and these red arrows on the bottom are the 850 millibar winds. And you can see they're kind of denoted by different colors. Typically, these winds are colder because they're higher up in the atmosphere and these winds down here are warmer little white particles here this is the simulated updraft of a storm see those white particles are moving up and as of right now our winds are moving in the same direction but not really that fast and so we're not really seeing too much rotation in fact, when winds are moving the same directions in the 500 millibar winds and the lower level winds as well, what tends to happen, even if you increase the speed of these winds, you don't typically see too much rotation uh, in that area. You can see these aren't really rotating too much because when winds are parallel, it is harder for a storm to get that rotation going. But I mean, in some instances, when the shear is strong, you can still end up getting a little bit of rotation inside of a storm with some stronger lower level and upper level winds but it's usually mainly stronger updrafts depending on the lapse rates and the instability you know if you had the lapse rates a little bit higher these little white particles would move faster up which would mean stronger updraft a little bit higher of a potential for some larger hail but generally speaking the winds being faster above the upper level and the lower level isn't the only thing that you need you need a directional component so watch what happens as we go around to the same shear values we'll bring it down a little bit to 30 knots on both here and then we'll slowly start start to change the direction of our lower level winds and you will see more and more that we change this to be perpendicular from each other so this would technically be our lower level winds coming out of the south and our upper level winds coming generally out from the west going to the east and you can see also if I change perspectives here this would be looking at the storm front on and this is kind of what you would see if you could see the air move in the environment yeah at around 30 knots of shear you can start to get some rotation you do need a lot more of other things to kind of line up for a mesocyclone like this to actually reach down into to create a tornado but you can also see with this more directional shear the more that we you know increase the speeds the stronger that mesocyclone really starts to rotate so it's not only the speed of our upper level shear it is also the perpendicularity of our upper level shear which is important so let's come back over to our map here now we're looking at the 500 millibar winds they are pretty strong we're talking about around 60 to 62 knots we come over here to our slider move that up to 62 knots but we don't haven't looked at the lower level winds yet so let's bring this uh, down to zero for now we'll change that as we get closer this is as our trough is starting to eject into the area and as we get into around 6 p.m tonight probably when we're going to start to see some convective initiation maybe try to start out in front of our main line you can see we're around that 50 
to 40 knots there so let's go ahead and readjust that down to around 53 knots i think that's a good and you can see that our winds with these little wind barbs down here our winds are going in this direction here and this direction down here or maybe mainly coming out of the south going up to the northeast so if we come over here to our simulation we can kind of change that here and our winds are more moving in this direction out of the south going up to the northeast now if we come all the way down to the 850 millibar winds and look at that environment here you can see that we have it a little bit of an i wouldn't say too much of an uptrend here in the h triple r model but one thing i will say it does seem like our shear is a little bit further to the south in comparison to what it was yesterday we had that shear mainly up here in the northeastern corner of texas now it's a little bit further to the south here into southeastern texas we're looking around 30 to 40 knots there so let's go plug that into our simulation match our wind speeds or at least for now directionally with our upper levels and if we look at this map and look at where these wind barbs are you can see that on the southern portion of our storms our winds are way more directional this is where our lower level instability kind of our storm juice is going to be hanging out but as you go further up to the north, you can see that they are a little bit of uh, almost perpendicular, but not as perpendicular as you'd be looking for, but a little bit better of a directional spin environment the further north that you go up. But you can see here, even with these winds matched up here and the direction, we will turn this just a little bit more to like about 51 degrees here. So we have a little bit of that change in direction. You can see that there is going to be a little bit of rotation in these mesocyclone so we do have to watch out to see if that's going to come down to the surface or not but again we have some other components of our storm that we are going to look at other than shear but this is an important one you know if we had our lower level shear per completely perpendicular with these speeds we would be seeing a lot of spinning storms out there but because they're just a little bit offset and not a more parallel than they are perpendicular it's going to be harder for these storms to really get that spin to consolidate into any kind of tornado now another thing that you need for these storms to be able to do something is these lapse rates and as you can see the h triple r is actually downgraded a little bit with this you can see we have a lot pretty large warm sector and a couple of pockets here where our lapse rates are high enough out in front of our frontal boundary but if we go over here our mesoscale analysis here you can see that it's a little bit non-existent you can see this blue line down here that's your five degree lapse rate and if we come over to our simulated lapse rate environment here you can see that the lower this is the harder it is for this little parcel down here to rise as you can see with below five lapse rates parcels are really struggling to rise you see we got that warm air at the bottom cooler air at the top but not cool enough to create enough of a gradient to where this air parcel can rise the bluer these colors up here are the colder the temperatures and the bigger that gradient is if the air at the bottom is still warm now if we move this above six degree lapse rates so if we can get up above six degree lapse rates today you can see that our air parcel is going to rise a lot better heck if we get even up into seven or eight you can see our air parcel launches even faster you can see these colors up here are more blue look at those red colors down at the surface and we have a much larger larger gradient or tighter gradient here between our temperatures that really helps these parcels rise so if we're going to be having any prefrontal storms today or strong tornadoes we are really going to need to see those lapse rates turn from this blue color here into a green color and this has got to make its way all the way up here so a lot has to change in order for our storm to have any sustained hope for developing those prefrontal storms and remember those prefrontal storms are those discrete cells don't really have much interaction between other storms which means they can produce stronger tornadoes for longer and we're just not seeing that right now and this is thankfully a pretty favorable look for the folks that are tr not trying to see a tornado to hope Hopefully that holds still one of the things that are causing this is the fact that we've had a little bit more rain than what we thought we would get and also we have a lot of cloud cover out over in our area where we're watching for severe weather if we can get this cloud layer to bake off and that sun reach down to the surface a little bit more efficiently we'll see those warmer temperatures near the surface warm up and if our temperatures above stay relatively cool or at least cooler than the ground below it warms up we could see those lapse rates increase so it's definitely something to kill still monitor but i'm definitely hopeful today that these lapse rates will play a role in keeping our severe weather threat a little bit lower also 
also, if we look at our actual measured instability here, it's a little bit further south than what we were expecting by this point. So I might not see too much of a northerly component with our severe and tornado risk. If these areas of instability can't really rise up that far to the north, we might be talking about a little bit more of a coastal event today. As our warm front is still pretty far to the south, you can see this little area right here where our winds are going like this here and our winds to the south are going like that. That denotes where our warm front is and this is the area that we've got to watch. We're going to have a little bit more spin added to our shear environment from this warm front. So even with a little bit more of a directional component, sorry, a unidirectional or parallel component with our wind shear, as we were just talking about, this warm front can make it a little bit more perpendicular where this thin area of extra spin comes into contact with our line. So that'll be something that we still have to watch out for. But again, it's going to be very hard for storms to do that with such low lapse rate. Now, if we come over to our severe weather risk for today, you can see that it has actually been bumped a little bit further to the south. We were talking about that possibility in yesterday's forecast, and it looks like it's happened here. You can see that we still have a 5% chance for tornadoes. Wind chances are about 15%. And those hail chances are around 15% as well. We're mainly talking about southeastern Texas going into north central and northern Louisiana, maybe a sliver there in southern Arkansas. But again, if that instability struggles to get up there and our lapse rates stay a little bit further to the south, I don't even see much severe weather in southern Arkansas really at all today. And as we go into tomorrow, we'll be doing an in-depth breakdown like we did today, tomorrow morning, as we will just have a lot more answers on what is possible. But as of right now, the main thing about tomorrow is we are going to have maybe a little bit more wind shear than today. The main problem with tomorrow is that our wind shear is pretty much going to be going in the same direction in all levels of the atmosphere. So we're not going to see as much of a directional component. Still could be a small chance if you get like a storm interact with another storm in just the right way. That can change the directionality of our lower level shear for a very small area. You could get maybe a little spin up tornado if you have the right storm interaction. But for the most part, it's not looking super favorable for tornadoes but tomorrow we'll have a little bit of a better picture there could be some changes still to come for the rest of the united states out here we are expecting another low pressure system to bring some snowfall from the 25th really all the way in through thanksgiving and maybe even after thanksgiving as that lake effect snow starts to pile up on the backside of this storm that low pressure is going to be bringing those cooler temperatures out of canada into the united states definitely going to be windy on the backside of this as well you can see those wind gradients are pretty tight there so we're probably going to see some 30 to 40 mile per hour winds maybe even wind gusts of up to 50 mile per hour winds with this storm and as it moves off to the east it's going to be bringing those winds out of canada and in over the great lakes and that is going to cause lake effect snow as the great lakes are still pretty warm when you get that cooler air and that wind move over that can create little updrafts up there drop a lot of snow on the coastal regions of some of these great lake regions we're talking about lake erie we're talking about buffalo we're talking about watertown potentially getting some decent snow and maybe even a little bit further inland because as i push this forward you can see that some of that lake effect snow does stream a little bit further inland into parts of pennsylvania and new york maybe could even see some snowflakes over there in northern new jersey probably not going to get too much accumulation over there there and if we come over to our estimated snowfall you can see we can have a strip of four to maybe five inches out over here into north and south dakota in northeastern minnesota we've seen a little bit of an uptrend maybe up to six to seven inches there northern wisconsin going into the up of michigan you know around 13 to 15 maybe even 17 inches of snow there and then back over here into the great lakes we could see some isolated spots of over a foot once the great lake event is all said and done out here near erie going into watertown and buffalo with some also some decent snow up there and some of the higher elevations here in vermont up here in northern michigan could also this is over here near traverse city and gaylord you can see that we're talking about maybe even up to a foot of snow isolated in some of these spots as well so some snow is coming but not really any snow that's going to knock your socks off probably it's going to be annoying to shovel roads should clear out pretty quickly out over here even though we're talking about higher snowfall amounts these areas are used to it now in terms of temperatures across the united states we are going to be expecting a warm-up to eventually happen after this little cold shot but first we're going to get this little cold shot we're really going to start on the 27th you can see that we're seeing those temperatures creep into the northern plains and also the great lakes could have some single digit temperatures out over here in north and south 
Dakota with some widespread 20s and 30s across the northern United States there. And then as we move into early morning on the 28th, that's when those temperatures are really going to step down into those 20s and 30s, even down here into the northern southeast bringing up that wind chill. You can see we can even get in the negatives up here, maybe even into the upper 20s into the southeast and maybe even into like the single digits over here in some of the higher elevations in the Appalachian Mountains as well. And as I continue to push this forward, you can see that after that cold air intrusion here, you can see that those temperatures are going to still stick around in the 30s as into the east coast and the northeast also the northern united states as we move into the 29th and then eventually we're going to expect a warm-up and another trough to move through see we have some pretty cold air up here into the canadian region but we're pretty far out here not really sure what this is going to do i do think this cold air is going to be sitting here but just to what degree that tries to spill into the united states it's going to make a big difference depending on how strong a low pressure system is as it rides up in this area and where that low pressure system goes if it just kind of goes in between these areas rides up directly to the north we could be talking about more snow back up here more rain on the eastern side or if that low pressure is stronger we could see maybe a stronger chance for some severe weather maybe even some tornadoes down here and then a larger intrusion on the backside but as of right now we just don't know how strong that low pressure system is going to be because so it's kind of worthless to talk about and really go into any detail of what could happen with this but yeah folks that's going to be it for me thank you again so much for tuning in and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you did and end up enjoying this forecast or maybe you were a little bit bored throughout it but you found it educational thank you so much peace